I think it's knowledge, mm. first and foremost. Um, I think it's 100 years of prohibition, mm. being told that these are dangerous drugs that are going to harm you rather than heal you. And that's the main problem. So people have been told and trained for four generations now that these are bad substances, you shouldn't take them. Uh, yet, in fact, the opposite is true. Mm. So <clears throat> doctors are generally conservative by nature. They're risk averse. They don't want to take a risk on something they don't understand, rightly so. Uh, and generally, majority of uh, medical practitioners in, in Australia aren't informed about medical cannabis. You know, there's a lot of groups such as this one and the Australian Cannabis Summit um, that are trying to promote knowledge in this way, awareness for doctors, and the message is getting out there, but that's the main hurdle, is getting people to understand mm. and be able to use these medications and not fear that they're going to harm someone or do it wrongly or overdose yeah. them. Um, I think that's one of the main points, yeah. yeah. And I think with that too, you do, not all doctors need to learn about it. You know, that there, there are plenty of us now and growing numbers who are interested in this field mm. and are doing it. So it's not like everyone has to learn, just open to the fact that maybe there's a very safe medicine that can bring enormous benefits to their patient. Mm. So just be open to talking to someone or sending your patient to someone who knows what they're doing. Yeah, I mean, Ananda and Plant Med are both referral-based clinics. So we take standard referrals from GPs, from specialists. Um, just like you, if you broke your arm, you go to see an orthopedic surgeon, you get a referral, you go there, he'll fix you up. Similarly with cannabis medicines, there are people who are really into this field and have got a good depth of knowledge that can benefit you. So as a practitioner, you don't need to know everything about it, but be aware of it and pass on that referral to someone that can mm. assist effectively. It'd be a good step. And you can also, as a GP, I think it's um, awareness will build and it's easy to use simple cannabis medications effectively without much risk. Yeah. If that doesn't work, refer on to a specialist. It's yeah. the same as any subspecialty area medicine. Yeah. And anything really that's preventing people from doing that is actually just story and stigma. Mm. Because the resistance to doing that is a story or some stigma that's not true. Mm. And if you remove that, then most doctors would happily refer their patient for some cannabinoid treatment in the hope that they would get better. For sure. I mean, I've got personally, I know I've got neurologists, um, paediatricians, psychiatrists that refer to plant med clinic mm. and maybe initially they were kind of reluctant they may have been pressured from their patients to get a referral to come there but once those doctors receive the progress letters see the results on their patients they're like wow there's something happening here there's yeah. something that i couldn't achieve with the medications that i was trying to use there's been no harm i'll send that doctor another patient and yeah. then another and that referral pattern grows and grows. that is growing steadily throughout australia i yeah. mean business and number of patients seems almost endless at the moment. There's not enough people prescribing and doing this job. No. So um, yeah, there's a lot of people out there that need to be assisted with their healing. Yeah, and I think one of the dangers, dangers, inconsistencies maybe, um, is that a lot of people try cannabinoids. So they, maybe they get their CBD or THC from somewhere and you know we're not quite sure of what's in the bottle sometimes um, and it doesn't work. Mm. And then they say cannabinoids don't work. Or there are doctors who might start tinkering with it um, and giving small doses of CBD and nothing happens. And, mm. then, and then they say, well, it doesn't work. So they write it off. It, it actually does work. You just, it needs to be done by someone who knows mm. what they're doing. Yeah. And I think that message needs to get out more and more. And again, the stigma and story is that somehow we're doing something wrong or we're dangerous or we're, we're on the edge here. But we're actually not doing anything dangerous and we're not on the edge and all of our patients are getting better. And mm. um, anything that, that's negative towards that is again, just story because, you know, I don't see why you would not consider these medicines, especially for things like pain and anxiety when you've got these heavy addictive drugs that are not doing the job anyway. And often we can remove them. It's very standard yeah. to remove a lot of the drugs, if not all the drugs um, that patients are on. Yeah. And I think Jamie was alluding to the fact that you know, the difference that we, from the previous question, the difference between conventional and cannabis medicine is that we've got to support that endocannabinoid mm. system first. So if you give someone a one-off dose of CBD, it's not going to do anything. Mm. It takes at least two to three weeks of consistent dosing to start noticing effects because with CBD, you're supporting the endocannabinoid system. You're not directly stimulating it. So we're relying on a body's health mm. to improve to get those effects. Mm. 
Similarly with THC, a one-off dose of THC may not be helpful at all. It may in fact make someone feel uncomfortable if they're not tolerated to those medicines. So there's a whole different perspective of how to use these medic medications. Yeah, and it's, that's, I think it, it's a very good point about supporting the endocannabinoid system mm. because you're not seeing results directly. You know, it's not like a painkiller. Painkiller, pain goes away, have another one. Mm. You have to manipulate this system back into balance mm -hmm. and then the progression changes. And that, you know, if you haven't seen that or you're not used to working with that. It, or waiting. Yeah. Taking the time. Exactly. And mm. in that time you're waiting, you might, well, it's not working. And then you stop. So it, I guess it's the understanding of how this works that really needs to change. And again, with that, if you don't want to, if doctors don't want to learn, that's totally fine. We can't know it all. Yeah, well, just be you know, open I don't really want to know about, you know, orthopedic surgery. Yeah. So I don't, I haven't specialised in that. Exactly. <laughs> not interested. Definitely. Yeah. And I think, you know, that really shows up. I've got a lot of autistic patients, a lot of children, and the mainstay of treatment for them is CBD high medications. Mm. And I say to them straight up to the patients and their, and their carers and family, look, you may get a result like you see on the internet where you're going to have a magical instantaneous result but more likely that's not going to happen and it's going to take a couple of weeks mm. to a couple of months or more to stabilize your child and get the results we're looking for so mm. not just dose and frequency but duration of treatment is important and I, find, I don't know if you find this but i find people sometimes move so slowly that the it's kind of almost imperceptible mm. you know and then they sort of seem to forget where they were two months ago definitely, definitely. you know mm. so their life has shifted so much but it's so subtle Mm. And they're so much better, and then their brain blocks out how bad it was a few months ago. The, the brain naturally forgets bad memories mm. and bad experiences. It, that's so we can not all have PTSD. But I find exactly the same thing. So I'll be talking to a patient, how's it going at their three month consult, three month review, and how's it going? What's been happening? How are you feeling? Oh, I feel a little bit better. Oh, how about that sciatica pain that you had? Oh, no, that's gone. Mm. How about your migraines? Have you had any headaches? Oh, no, I haven't. Now you mention it. And how about your anxiety and depression? Oh, it's quite relieved, actually. Mm. Are you sleeping well? Yes. So we're getting great results. But it's take, because you need to take time to build tolerance and not get the negative effects, that period, yeah, the perception of the patient yeah. changes and they don't notice until you say, well, actually, when you first talked to me, you rated your pain nine out of 10. What is it today? Oh, I don't tell them nine out of 10 first. Say, what do you rate your pain today? Often it'll be two to three out of 10. So there's even that indicator that it's working. Uh, and the fact that the medicines are being reduced, PRN, um, yep. pain medicines, yep. automatically stopped by the patient. Have you used any, you know, Panadine for in the last two months? Oh, no, I haven't actually. Mm. Yeah, so these are indicators that it's working for the yeah. patient, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's the return of balance, isn't it? It's a, it's a regulation that comes back into mm. their systems. But it's, it's, it's a different way of looking at it compared to most allopathic medicines.